Good morning. This is a second of a two-part series investigating a rider mower with low power and blue smoke out the exhaust. In the first video we found black plugs on both sides and we found borderline compression on the right which improved after adjustment of valve lash. After that a leak down test was normal. Well today I've decided to inspect and clean the carburetor thinking that combustion imbalance from a dirty carburetor is the cause. I hope you come along. So let me show you how far I've gotten here. I don't have the camera on for the whole thing just because it'd take too long and I don't want to bore you. This is the choke cable and it goes to here. I just undid this screw and then unhooked it there. And then this is the, the orange throttle cable. It uh, hooks in here in the, in the same way. I've taken off the fuel hose that goes here and here just to give myself more room. And now I'm undoing the intake manifold, so four bolts. These are 3 16 they're not metric, interestingly enough, and I'm just taking these off now. One more to go. Okay. Now I'm still hooked on the bottom somehow. Oh, I see. It's this, um, two things. One is the electrical connector to the fuel control solenoid, just pull that out, and then there's a single wire here, let's see if I can't get this thing out here, there, let's hook there, these are the air intake gaskets, now let's take some of the plastic parts off. This, um, these four nuts are 11 millimeter, and if you look carefully, you can see there's an E6 torque on the end. That one in particular seized up on me, so I'm gonna back this off with the E6 torque. And those go all the way through to the intake. gasket is stuck right there. Oh, there we are. Okay. Looks like I need to back all of these off to get the uh, other side out. These all look the same. So let's take the bowl off now. Dang, I should have had this one on camera, but uh, this one was stuck and I didn't want to put heat to it because of all the sensitive structures and seals underneath and so I used the impact hammer. Put this in like this, you turn it counterclockwise, wrap it with a hammer on the, on the end side here, like that, and it breaks it free. Ooh, look at all that dirt in there. Yuck. That's the thing about expensive tools, they tend to be quite thick and where you need them to get into a tight space, sometimes they're just not adequate. So it's always nice to have a cheap tool set that's quite thin. You have to hold this by this end, hold this steady, and then spin it off. Wow, look at that. One of the things I heard people complaining about is that these little jets right here, these two, are different sizes and if you tip it upside down they tend to fall out and so there are a number of questions online about which one is which and so I'm going to show you how, how mine are arranged. I can't give you a guarantee that this, um, these aren't in backwards because I'm the second owner of this vehicle but in any case the left side is this side and the right is this side. This is the front of the vehicle and that's the rear of the vehicle and if I flip it over, you see how I've put my finger in it so they don't fall out and I'll just show you 
with the magnifier, which is which. Now, I don't know if you can perceive it, but um, if I get the light just right, you'll see a number scrawled into the left one, which is 111, and the number scrawled into the right, which is 114. And so I'm going to presume that the 114 is the diameter of the orifice and the larger one is on the right side. So I've just been cleaning this out with, um, actually I'm using WD-40 now because I'm out of brake clean at the moment. I don't really trust carb cleaner in this situation. I'm going to make sure all four of these jets are open. All four of these passageways. I think I'm pretty clean right now. You can also pull these jets out, but I don't really see a point in doing that right now. Because my passageway is clear and it'll just be one more thing to lose at the moment. This is compressed air. It's a little bit more controllable than my air compressor. taking this wearing off so it doesn't swell up with carb cleaner. Mostly I'm using WD-40 here to, just because that's what I have available today. Now I've got a, a tiny little wire. I'm just going to clean each of these little orifices here. Let's take this top plate and gasket off. So I want to get at this little black device in there, so I'll need to take this plate off. There's a little gasket in there I want to get out. There. Okay, I'm going to spray in here and watch the fluid come out here. It seems to be good flow. Same thing with this one. best way to put this in is upside down because this little thing doesn't fall out. You slide it into here like that. And it goes in there like so. Let me show you this fuel cutoff solenoid. It's actually kind of an interesting design. So um, when there's no power to it, it's normally closed with this plunger up and you can see it's spring loaded. And then when you apply 12 volts or yeah, I guess 12 volts to this, 
the plunger pops down. This little part just rests on top of it here. And so you can see where the plunger, that's the orifice that the plunger plugs. So fuel comes in here, then past the inlet needle control by the float to the bowl. If the fuel shutoff valve is open, manifold vacuum draws fuel up through the two jets into the white emulsion tube, where it's vaporized into a fine mist of fuel droplets. That fine mist is pulled through the discharge nozzle into each cylinder. So pretty simple. So if you've got a problem with um, fuel everywhere, fuel in your crankcase or uh, siphoning fuel, look at this little gasket right here and check out your fuel control solenoid. They call this the anti-backfire valve as well because when you turn the engine off, when you turn the key off, this cuts off, this springs up and it cuts off fuel um, delivery and so the idea is to reduce backfiring. When this thing goes back in, it's you can put a wrench on both sides and tighten it up. Make sure you get it on the correct side for your particular vehicle. And then this little bit, it just presses on. And then you put it on. Here's a little tip. We're hooking the intake manifold back up to the carb. And this um, here is the choke. This little cable here hooks into the choke. This one is for the um, governor and the throttle, but the choke <clears throat> needs to be hooked up now um, because if you don't hook it up now, you won't be able to get it done later. And so you'll end up having to go back uh, to this stage and do this, that, the next part all again. Uh, don't ask me how I know that. Well, after I got the vehicle all buttoned up, I drove it around the garden and to my happy surprise, uh, all of the blue smoke was gone and I had loads of power. And so the problem was solved. It was a dirty carburetor at the end of things. Now, the thing that turned this into a comical saga was the fact that in my first tool around the garden, I ran over some mesh netting and that seized up the blade and so I had to take the blade off. And as I was taking the blade off, I broke a metric bolt. So I had to drill out the remaining fragment and remove it. But at the end of the day, it's all good. I'm back to normal. Say, um, if this video helped you out and you want to see more of them, then hit like or subscribe or leave a comment. I'd love to hear what others say. Thanks for watching.